is a depiction of the condition of the world just before he returns. And who does he use as an example of the condition of the world just before he comes? Talk to me, church. He uses Noah. Question. Why was Noah chosen? Now, before you answer, we are told that we are to do more teaching than preaching. She says there are so, so many sermonizing, but there's not enough teaching. And we're living in a day and hour, brothers and sisters, that we need to be what? Taught. So question, why was Noah chosen? Turn with me to Genesis chapter 6. Let's let the Bible explain it to us. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. The book of Genesis. First book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 6. Are we there? Let's look at verse 8. The Bible says... But Noah found what? Grace in the eyes of the Lord. It says, verse 9, these are the generations of who? Now, what's the next words? Noah was a just man in what? Perfect in his generations. And Noah did what? He walked with God. This is why Noah was chosen. Turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. So if Noah was chosen for such a time as then during the Andanubian world, when the world was what? Corrupt, the Bible says. Evil and corrupt. Now, are we living in an evil and corrupt world today? So will it behoove us to Look at the example of Noah and see what condition we need to be in so that God can use us at such a time as when? Now. Turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, looking at verse 25. James, the book of James chapter 1. In verse 25, are we there? James chapter 1, verse 25, the Bible reads, But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of what? And continue therein, he being not a forgetful who? But a what? Of the what? This man shall be blessed in his deeds. Was Noah not a forgetful hearer? Noah also was a what? Doer. Now question. If Noah would have presumed, assumed that God's mercy would save me, I don't have to build that boat. Would Noah have been saved? Would Noah have been saved? Another thing, Noah did not stop to question what would the inhabitants of the old world think of me if I begin to build a boat on dry ground. He didn't stop to think what would people think. Now think about it, brothers and sisters. It had never, what, rained before. And here Noah is building a boat on dry ground where it had never rained. But Noah didn't concern himself with what people thought. 
And the reason why I bring that out, brothers and sisters, is because I can remember when I began to do Bible studies. And the people I was doing Bible studies with went to church on Saturday. Now, I was not accustomed to going to church on Saturday. I was accustomed to going to church on, what's the other day? So when I found out that they went to church on Saturday, but when they proved to me through the word of God that Saturday was the correct day, because even though at that time I didn't know, didn't know anything about the Bible, I believed the Bible. And because they were able to prove to me that Saturday was the correct day, the first thing came to my mind was, what would my friends, what, think? But because I believe the thus said the Lord and whatever came out of this book was true, I stood on the word of God. And because of that, I stand before you today. And because Noah was faithful, brothers and sisters, because he was faithful, Noah was able to save his family. Question. When Noah entered the ark, what did that represent to the Andanubian world? Talk to me, church. When Noah entered the ark and the door was shut, I just gave you the answer. What did that mean to the Andanubian world? Who said that? Whoever said that, that is correct. It proved that probation had, what, closed on the Andanubian world. Now, probation closes in two ways. It closes at, what, death, and it closes when Jesus does, what, comes out of the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary. Am I correct? Look at your handout. Uh, did we pass out the handouts? Uh, where, are our, where are our deacons? Okay, just a moment. Uh, yeah, I have a handout for everyone. Just bear with us here for a moment. Little technical difficulties, but we'll get around that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But in <clears throat> while these are being handed out, it says here every day we have been associating with men and women who are judgment bound. Did you hear that? Every day, brothers and sisters, that we come in contact with our co-workers, we come in contact with people we may run into the store, or wherever the case may be, we are coming in contact with people that are judgment bound. It says, each day, may have been the dividing line to some soul. Everyone may have made the decision which shall determine his future destiny. What has been our influence over these fellow travelers? What efforts have we put forth to bring them to Christ? Did you hear that? What efforts are we putting forth to bring individuals to Christ that we run into and meet every day? 
Brothers and sisters, it would be a sad, sad thing on our record to come in contact with your co-workers or whoever it may be, and you have never ministered to that soul. And then you come to work one day and find out that that precious soul was killed in a car accident. And you never took the time to share the lovely, lovely message of Jesus Christ to that individual. How would that make you feel? Think about it, brothers and sisters. When we were in the world, some of us, when we were in the world and there was some worldly event that we were planning on going to, we had no problem with sharing it with any and everybody. But now we come to Christ, and Christ, the one who has died for our sins, to bless us to have eternal life, we are afraid to share what Jesus has done for us. This is why the Bible tells us that we need to examine ourselves to make sure, brothers and sisters, that we are what? In the faith. Question. Why is it, why is it that the Andalusian world knew not until the crisis came? The Bible says they knew not until the flood came. Why is it? That's right. They ignored the warning signs. They ignored the warning signs. Were there warning signs? What was one of the greatest warning signs that God gave them that what Noah was preaching was the truth. Who said that? When the who? When the animals begin to go orderly, two by two, seven by seven, in the ark. That was a supernatural event. But brothers and sisters, we can rationalize anything. We can rationalize anything. I can imagine that these people begin to say, oh, that's some magic that Noah is doing. Trickery. Oh, don't pay that, don't pay that no mind. Brothers and sisters, we can rationalize anything. But look at number two on your handout. Listen to what it says here. It says, in the days of Noah, the overwhelming majority was opposed to the truth and in armored with a tissue of falsehoods. Did you hear that? Okay. It says, I looked up the word in armored. It says, a strong or excessive interest or fascination. These people have become so accustomed to falsehood that they rationalize away even the animals walking on the earth. And don't count it strange, brothers and sisters. Don't look at them as though they were crazy because we do it today. It says the land was filled with violence, war, crime, murder was the order of the day. Just so will it be before Christ's second coming. It says... Christ was engaged in this warfare in Noah's day. It was whose voice? His voice that spoke to the inhabitants of the old world in messages of warning, reproof, and invitation. 
He gave the people a probation of 120 years in which they might have repented. But they chose the deception of Satan and perished in the waters of the flood. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters? Noah preached 120 years. Now, I can imagine the first 10 years, people begin to say, amen, we better get it together. 20 years go by, 30, 40, nothing's happening. And all of a sudden, that man don't know what he's talking about. And people just rationalize it away. Now, brothers and sisters, I believe that God is warning us today. Let me ask you a question. We've all read the book of Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, are these things happening in the world today? Are we having wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, pestilence? Are we having these things, brothers and sisters? These are the warning signs that God is giving to his people and to the world that his coming is near. We just read in our scripture reading that as it was in the days of who? Noah, so shall it be when Christ comes again, right? And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 6 that it was evil continually in Noah's day. Brothers and sisters, most of, most, some of you here are much older than me, and you know you have never seen some of the things that are happening today in this world. You have never seen that. 50 years ago. Some of the things that are happening in this world would have never been spoken of 50 years ago. God is screaming at the world and also to his people that we got to get it together, brothers and sisters. Now, it's one thing for us to be here on the Sabbath and reading these things. But it's another thing to be here and to know these things and don't make it. This is a serious issue, brothers and sisters. God is trying to wake us up. Let us not be sleeping virgins. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 21. Luke. Luke chapter 21. What should we be watching for, brothers and sisters? Luke chapter 21. <clears throat> In the book of Luke chapter 21, looking at verse, starting with verse 34, the Bible tells us in Luke 21, verse 34, it says, And do what? Take heed. What does it mean to take heed? That's right. It says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and what? The cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted what? Worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, brothers and sisters, this is a warning that God tells us to take heed. Take heed of yourselves. And it's written 
in red. Now, hold that thought, take heed, it says. Hold that thought and turn with me to Revelation chapter 16. Hold that thought. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 15. Revelation. As a matter of fact, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, we just read in Luke chapter 23, Jesus gives us a warning to take heed. Look at your handout on number three. Number three on your handout. Listen to what it says here. It says, Sad will be the retrospect in that day when men stand face to face with what? The world's pleasure, riches, and honors would not then seem so important. You know, on our way here, we looked over at a ballpark, and the park was full of cars. And I guess they had some kind of ball game or something going on. And I told my wife, I said, soon and very soon, those those things that they're participating in, they will have no interest in pretty soon. A time is trouble is coming, brothers and sisters. And they will, the cares of this life, the cares of this world has the affections of the mind. But soon, brothers and sisters, those things will mean nothing to them. Listen to what she says. She says, they will see that they have fashioned their characters under the deceptive allurements of who? The garments they have chosen are the badge of their allegiance to the first great apostate. Then they will see the results of their choice. There will be no future probation in which to prepare for eternity. It is in this life what life? That we are to put on the robe of Christ's righteousness. This is our only opportunity to form characters for the home which Christ has made ready for those who obey his commandments. The days of our probation are fast what? The end is what? Can you see it, church? We don't get but one shot at this. The Andanubians only got one shot at it. They didn't get on the boat. And let me ask you a question, brothers and sisters. Was Noah's evangelistic effort for 120 years, he had an evangelistic effort, was it successful? Yes or no? Yes. Praise the Lord. How many say no? Praise the Lord. It was a successful campaign. Now, why was it successful? Because he saved his family. Brothers and sisters, what does it profit us to go out and save the world and our children are lost? He saved his family. It was a successful campaign. Because the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 7, chapter 11, verse 7, it says, By faith, Noah being warned of God, 
of things not seen as yet moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his what? House. If Noah had not been obedient to God's word, his family would have been lost. On the other hand, brothers and sisters, we have the example of Lot. Because he entered into the city, and we have been told, brothers and sisters, to do what? Get out of the cities. And because he lived in the city, his family, his children were affected. And I'm sure you know the rest of the story. That's not my message for today. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42 and through 44. Matthew chapter 24, looking at verse 42. Are we there? The Bible says, watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord do come. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also what? For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. In such an hour, brothers and sisters. When it says that Jesus comes as a thief, he comes as a thief to those who are what? Not ready. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. Verse 15, the Bible says, Behold, I come as a who? Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk what? And they see his shame. Here, brothers and sisters, we see this is written in what? Why? Because Jesus is speaking, right? We just read Matthew chapter 24, verses 42 through, 42 through 44. It's also written in red, right? So who's speaking? So what is Jesus trying to do? So he's putting us on what? Red alert. Jesus is speaking. It's written in red. He's putting us on red alert, brothers and sisters. And I looked up the word red alert, and it says here, red alert. A warning that there is great danger. A state of alarm brought on by impending danger. So Jesus is trying to wake up his church, put them on alarm that danger is coming. And brothers and sisters, it's interesting. How many of you, and I, I know pretty much everyone here, has read or have the book, The Great Controversy? In The Great Controversy, she has a whole chapter called The Impending Conflict, chapter 36, Satan's Master Plan. God has his church on red alert, brothers and sisters. There is no excuse for us to be caught off guard. We see 
that a financial crisis is looming. We have been told in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, that a time is soon coming that we're not going to be able to do what? Brothers and sisters, don't think it happenstance when you begin to see these banks collapsing. These are warning signs, brothers and sisters, to let us know that we better get our house in order. If you plan on depending on Walmart, Kroger's, Aldi's, to purchase your goods, you're going to be disappointed here in the near future. We've been counseled to prepare to grow our own provisions because a time of trouble, a time of buying and selling would be a very thank you. The handwriting, brothers and sisters, is on the wall. We can't be playing, brothers and sisters. We can't wait until it's on, up on us and then say, I'm going to prepare. It's going to be too late. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Starting with verse 1. Are we there? <coughs> the Bible says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a who? In the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then what? Sudden destruction cometh upon them as travailed upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should, what, overtake you as a thief. God is speaking to us this, this morning, brothers and sisters. Ye are all the children of who? Give me another word for that. We are all children of, who said that? We are all children of prophecy. We are all children of prophecy. It says here, and children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not do what? Sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Brothers and sisters, if we do what we're supposed to do, we will be a light to others that don't have a clue what's going on. Brothers and sisters, the world, even though they may know, know nothing about the Bible, the world knows that something is about to happen. They know it. They can see it too. They just don't have the answer. And we have it, brothers and sisters. We have it. This is why we need to be about our father's business so that we can share it with others. It says here, we have placed, I have placed in your hand this morning what God just told us in 1 Thessalonians. We are Children of light. Children of prophecy. The spirit of 
prophecy. Look at number four on your handout. It says, There are in the world today many who close their eyes to the evidence that Christ has given to warn men of his coming. I hope that's not anybody in this church. It says, they seek to quiet all apprehensions, while at the same time, the signs of the end are rapidly fulfilling. And the world is hastening to the time when the Son of Man shall be revealed in the clouds of heaven. Paul teaches that it is sinful to be indifferent to the signs which are, which are to precede the second coming of Christ. Those guilty of this neglect, he calls children of the night and of what? Darkness. So brothers and sisters, it's a serious thing to neglect what God has given to us. Because if not, brothers and sisters, we'll receive the same fate that those in darkness shall receive if we don't take heed. If Noah had not have taken time to build the boat, would he have still been saved when the flood came? Absolutely not. So it behooves us, brothers and sisters, to take heed to the counsel that God has given us Turn with me in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Looking at verse 20. Isaiah chapter 26. Looking at verse 20. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, Come, my people, enter thou into the chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to do what? to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. God is telling us, brothers and sisters, to hide ourselves for a little moment. I think of Psalms 91, where we are all familiar with Psalms 91. God wants to shelter us, brothers and sisters. But he can only shelter us if we are being what? Obedient. We have to be obedient, brothers and sisters. To much is given, much is what? Required. Look at number five on your handout. It says here, the point is fast being reached when the iniquity of transgression will be to the full. God gives nations a certain time of probation. He sends light and evidence that if received, will save them. But if what? Refuse, as the Jews refuse light, indignation and punishment will fall upon them. If men refused to be benefited and chose darkness rather than light, they will reap the result, results of their choice. The professed Christian world is advancing as did the Jewish nation from one degree of sinfulness to a greater degree, refusing warning after warning and rejecting a what? while crediting the fables of men. You know, that's interesting. The Lord would tell us to do something, and we won't do it. But then when man tell us to do it, we'll jump on the bandwagon. 
Something's wrong with that picture, brothers and sisters. It says here, <clears throat> the Lord God will soon arise in his wrath and pour out his judgments upon those who are repeating the same sins of the inhabitants of the noontic world. Did you hear that, brothers and sisters? Solomon lets us know that if you want to know your future, study your past. That's all we have to do. Because history always does what? Repeats. Look at number six. It says, in many ways, Satan is revealing that he rules the world. He is influencing the hearts of men and corrupting their minds. Do you believe that? Brothers and sisters, this is a dangerous world we live in. How many of you ready, are, are truly ready to go home? I'm not talking about that brick house that you're going to go to when we leave church. I'm talking about the one that Christ has prepared for us in John chapter 14. How many are you really ready to go home? Brothers and sisters, when you, watch, when you turn on the television and turn on one of those news channels, it should sadden your heart. It should sadden our heart. To what we see. Brothers and sisters, I have determined that me and my wife, we no longer have a television in our home. I got enough to deal with up here than to continue to watch what is happening out there. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? The great controversy, brothers and sisters, is here. I don't have time for that foolishness. I'm I, I try to keep this going all the time in my head. Whether I'm reading or whether I'm listening. When I was in the world, brothers and sisters, it was not, and, 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 and a, 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 a song or something that I, I, I liked it. What did I do? I listened to it what? Over and over until I learned that song, right? Well, brothers and sisters, that principle stands both ways. If I'm repeating this over and over, then Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also what? In Christ Jesus. We have to have the mind of Christ. And when we have the mind of Christ, this world will become what to us? Dark. Dark. And we'll have a desire to go home. Think about this, brothers and sisters. If my wife went to the store, and when she came back home, I had several pictures of young ladies that were on the wall that weren't there before. She comes home, and she sees these young ladies on the wall, and she says, what cousins are these? And I said, oh, no, 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 they're not my cousins. This first one here was my first girlfriend, I still have feelings for her. So that's why I got her up here. Oh, the second one here, I almost married. I still have feelings for her. Now, what would my wife think about the type of relationship I have for her. What would she think, brothers and sisters? Would it be a good one? 
Will she be able to trust me? Well, what does Christ think when we still have pictures of Satan in our mind? What does he think? Do Christ want half of us or does he want all of us? We have to eradicate, erase those pictures of Satan out of our minds. This is why, brothers and sisters, we have to, we have to put an effort in spending time here. I know my weaknesses. You know yours. We have two brothers and sisters. Did we read number six? I don't think we did. It says here, in many ways, yeah, we didn't read all of it. In many ways, Satan is revealing that he rules the world. He is influencing the hearts of men and corrupting their minds. Men in high places are giving evidence that their thoughts are evil continually. Is that not true? Many are seeking after riches and scruple not to add to their wealth through fraudulent transactions. The Lord is permitting these men to expose one another in their evil deeds. Some of their inquisitious practices are being laid open before the world that thinking men who still have a desire in their hearts to be honest and just with their fellow men may understand why God is beginning to send his judgments on the earth. The Lord will surely punish the world for its iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. And that's coming from Isaiah chapter 26, verse 21. Brothers and sisters, in closing, turn with me to the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 91. Looking at verse 14. Psalms 91 and verse 14. The Bible says, Because he have set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Have you set your love upon him today? The Bible says, I will set him on high because he have known my name. Do you know his name, brothers and sisters? If you don't know his name, you need to get to know his name. Brothers and sisters, God is appealing to us this morning that time is running out. If you don't remember anything I've said this morning, please remember this, that God's church is on red alert. We are in danger, brothers and sisters. But under the perfect wing of God, we are told that he will protect us. Let me ask you something, brothers and sisters. If you were in a battle, in war, and you had your body vest on, your helmet on, all the armor that you need to protect you in battle. And the guns are blazing. Would you run out there without your helmet and your armor on? 
Would you, brothers and sisters? Would you go out in a blazing flame of bullets without your helmet, your body gear on? No, you wouldn't. Well, brothers and sisters, this warfare is even dangerous than the battlefield out there. And this is why God tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, to put on the, the whole armor of God. Why is he telling us that? Because there's danger out there. Satan is not playing with us. He hates us with a passion. Why? Because we are the apple of Christ's eye. He can't get to Christ, but he can get to us. But if we are faithful like Job, if we are faithful like Job, brothers and sisters, what does Satan say about Job? I can't get to him because you have a... Do you want the hedge, brothers and sisters? If you want the hedge, brothers and sisters, stand with me this morning as we close. Father in heaven, you see your children standing, and I'm standing as well. Lord, we recognize that within ourselves, we can't make it. But you have given us your promise in Hebrews 13, 5, that you would never ever leave us nor forsake us. And we are clinging to that promise this morning. And Lord, we recognize that we need to spend more time with thee so that we would have your name written in our foreheads and not the enemy. Please, dear God, please be with your children here this morning, Lord. I pray, Father, that as you spoke through Noah to the Andanuvian world, I pray, Lord, that you spoke to your children here this morning. We thank you, Father, for we recognize the condition of our hearts. And we know, Father, that you are able to give us a new heart. And so, Lord, we are asking for that heart. We're asking, Lord, that we would be obedient to what you have asked us to do. Thank you, dear God, for your great kindness and mercy you continue to show towards us. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you do. And we give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 598, Watch Ye Saints, 598.